sit it right here. It's all he drinks. Your syrup is liquefying him. He's turning him full headed. Now, look now. You are scaring away my customers. Why don't you bugger off or I'll give you something to remember me by? Oh, you can't talk to me like that, you little guttling. What's all this then? Oh, sod off. Keep a sharp eye out, lads. Someone's targeting our network. The distillery might be next. You should not go about frightening respectable gentlemen, young man. I didn't realize snooping around was considered gentlemanly. Snooping? Sir, I assure you... Keep vigilant. Quick. was too close a <sighs> Well done, dear boy. Well done. Charles Darwin, delighted to make your acquaintance. Jacob Fry, the pleasure's all mine. <laughs> While you were busy wreaking havoc, I found this. It indicates that a sample of every batch has been sent to Lambeth Asylum. Oh, I wonder if it's visiting hours. Don't be so hasty, Mr. Fry. Many people work at Lambeth. You wouldn't want to attract unwanted attention. Hmm. Where was the fun in that? Not every problem can be solved by blowing things sky high. Sometimes a little discretion is in order. It's getting late. I will meet you at the asylum to continue our investigation. The aura of death surrounds thee both. Get thee behind me! <laughs> Alas, these days stupidity is all too prevalent. You know, I never asked your names when we last met. I'm Evie Fry, and this is my brother Jacob. Tell me, do you believe in ghosts? Not particularly. Yes. I'm skeptical myself. Here we are, in the world's most advanced city, yet its citizens are so enthralled to the supernatural they leave themselves vulnerable to charlatans. Which is why I joined the Ghost Club. The first society in the world to look systematically at the phenomenon. Because truth, like a spirit, must be cajoled before it will reveal itself. Will you join us? Sounds... Absolutely ridiculous. Why not? It does sound intriguing. Splendid. I have your first case. It was right. Foul weather wouldn't know where to have you. Foul weather. I have told you before, sir, I had nothing to do with that anonymous article. Nothing, I said. That is a lie, sir. And you know it. Bah, I don't have time for this nonsense. Nonsense? It is my name and reputation you have willfully besmirched, sir. My very name. Bah! <laughs> drive, damn you, drive. <laughs> that is Richard Owen. A vile, despicable wretch of a man. Really? I could have sworn you were close friends. Mr. Owen works at the asylum. He will know who made the syrup. Get him! Get him! Faster, you netwit! Faster! Netwit! Faster! Hurry up, Mr. Fry, or you'll lose him!
nobody's paying you, it's not worth it. Do you realize how much trouble you're in? I take this! None at all? Bah, if you're trying to intimidate me, ruffian, you're wasting your time. I've always wondered how much of a beating this type of vehicle could take. for you, sir. Whatever it is, Darwin Bob, I will not be mad. What about steric soothing syrup? What well, no, no, the soothing syrup? Why would a scientist have really been in this guy in fact? I wager your life, Mr. Owen, that you know something. This one's a oh. Stop! I'm telling you, I do not know a thing. I swear, what are my involved? I've never been involved with anyone selling their patient medicine. There may be some truth to that, but you do know who created it. Tell me! I will not utter a word on the matter. I am a gentleman, sir, and I... Yeah, I take this! <laughs> Next stop, the River Thames. Next stop, the River Thames. Better speak now, old man. Stop! For pity's sake, stop or I will tell you everything I know. Dr. Elliotson, Dr. John Elliotson, he formulated the elixir. He's the man you want, not me. I beg you, good sir, stop this madness. Now, in a was ever. that so hard? Mr. Fry, I trust that you had a productive meeting with Mr. Owen. Oh, yes, we had a most wonderful chat. I found out the man behind Starrick's soothing syrup is John Elliotson. Dr. Elliotson, I haven't heard that name in a long while. He was a brilliant heart specialist until he became obsessed with phrenology and mesmerism. It ruined his career. Well, how shall we proceed? Oh, with all respect, Mr. Darwin, I believe I should proceed alone. After all, we wouldn't want to attract any unwanted attention. Sounds very wise. Good luck, my boy. Oh, and uh, Mr. Fry, should you find yourself with any free time, please do call on me. As you've just witnessed, the application of too much pressure can sometimes result in unexpected outcomes. Unfortunately, it appears I've ruined the organ.
Send up a cadaver. At once, Dr. Litson. I don't care about your ethics, and I care even less about your damn patience. Now hand over your keys. What are you doing? Haven't you heard? You're fired. Now bugger off. to do it. with Miss Nightingale at once. One of the brutes stole my key, and there's no one around. I can't get out of here. Stole your key? Don't go anywhere. I might be able to do something. Oh, quite. Thank you, sir. Well, you'll know where to find me, sir. Oh, go on now, sir. I will wait here. My gratitude, sir. I shall inform Miss Nightingale that I'll not be working for this asylum ever again. Crack in the wall! And don't come back! Ugh. Ugh, bloody rats! This place... So filthy!
Here it is, Doctor. We will continue our experiment shortly. In a moment, we will compare the brains of our two specimens. Since both specimens had a propensity towards violent behavior, we should see similar protrusions in specific parts of their brains. Corpses do not have boot. to dance. Yet I can only think of beginnings. A better tomorrow. Forged with the blood of visionaries. All I see is the blood of a lunatic. <laughs> Do you truly believe murdering an old man will stop humanity's great architect? Crawford Starrick has a glorious design for mankind. Designs are meant to be broken. I are a child. A child who believes they can solve all the world's woes with a flick of a blade. Have you ever pondered the consequences of your actions, Jacob Fry? Or did your father teach you nothing? Syrup production has ceased. Outrageous! Fry intends to endanger all of London at the hands of the mob. Or perhaps he doesn't intend much of anything at all. Thank He's you. simply content to dice with our lives. The asylum is shut up. Medical care throughout the city is in disarray. He does not, cannot understand the consequences of his actions. The man is clearly an anarchist. Gentlemen. This tea was brought to me from India. By a ship, then up from the harbor to a factory, where it was packaged and ferried by carriage to my door, unpacked in the larder and brought upstairs to me. All by men and women who work for me, who are indebted to me, Crawford Starrick, for their jobs, the time, the very lives they lead. They will work in my factories, and so too shall their children. And you come to me with talk of this Jacob Fry, this insignificant blemish who calls himself assassin. You disrespect the very city that works day and night so that we may drink this, this miracle, this tea. I'm nearing the end of my research. Our beloved London shall not suffer such a bothersome fool for much longer. And what of her sister I've heard of? 
Miss Fry. Miss Fry shall be gutted. Soon enough. Delicious. Sorry to interrupt, Initiate. Thought you'd like to know that Sean and Rebecca got away from Otsoberg. Berg runs a unit called Sigma Team. Violet DaCosta is his tech support. They've been hunting and killing assassins for a long time. Thank God you're all right. Oh, tish tosh. It'll take more than a Templar super soldier to end the glorious saga of Sean Danger Hastings. I was talking to Rebecca. Right. Anyway, Berg's presence confirms it. The Peace of Eden is in London. The Initiate's data sync suggests it's the Shroud. The Templars seem to want it pretty bad all of a sudden. They must know something we don't. The only thing we know is that we can't go up against Sigma Team alone. Leave that to me. In the meantime, keep a low profile. Let the Initiate continue to sync the data. Owning the railway wasn't enough. Now Starek has bought an omnibus company as well. I suppose he wants to control the neighborhood's workers and keep them under his thumb. Pearl Attaway is Starek's competitor, is she? Perhaps it's time I went into business. And Miss Fry, what are your plans? I studied the history we recovered from the Kenway Mass. past few days when I've been doing my round, some bampot starts following me. Nervous looking laddie. Oh, he's up to any good. I'll tell you what. Do your rounds as usual. If he appears, I'll keep an eye on him. When we return, put him into the train. Aye. All right. Agnes, take care. There's a gang out looking for you. Ach, not at all. Just one gleek at laddie following me. You certain? Certain as can be. he found in the mud. Was it even a nice locket? Bunch of savages. Does it matter? This thuggery is mad. There he is. The rascal. What are you doing up there? You damn pillock. Uh, sorry, but that woman's from an important gang. Gang? What gang's that? I think it's in a train. Sounds like the bastards will be okay, Lock. Alert the lads on the rooftops. We'll take her out. She's right there. The one with the ninny following her about. That idiot following us.
right, dear. Of course I am. Why would there be... There's a whole gang out to get you. No, some Egypt can't even follow me proper. No, they're dangerous. There might be an ambush in the station. Can he be daft? I must get to the station before Agnes does. That then? Now, what's happening with the fellow who's following Agnes? Who are you? Uh, Nigel, Nigel Bumble. Why were you following us? I, I want to join your gang. Ah, oh, for Christ's sake, he knows who we are now. <laughs> All right, laddie. I can use you to tidy up the train a bit, if you didn't mind getting dirty. Really? Terrific! Uh, you won't regret it, miss.